Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back. It's good to see you in the shop. So uh, this time around, we're going to be doing a little bit of a knife build. We're going to use the scrap pile Damascus uh, material that we made. We're going to cut the, sort of the bad end off, you know, the end that always has a little bit of um, messed up material because it's the end of the billet kind of a thing. And we actually cut that off in the last video, refined it a little bit, and it looks pretty good. I think we're going to build a knife out of it, and we're going to use it to trade to my buddy Corey at the bandsaw uh, sawmill blade outfit and see if we can get ourselves some more 15 and 20 bandsaw blade material. Uh, I'd let you guys know what else has been going on. You haven't seen me around much, not many videos out. Got sick at the end of the holidays and ended up with pneumonia. And it's had me uh, kind of sidelined, not being able to do much of anything for about the last three weeks. So uh, I'm coming back and it's going to be a slow return. Um, not probably going to do too many videos in the beginning. I uh, get tired real easy. I hope you enjoy this one and uh, stick with me. So, I'll see you on the other end. Thanks, guys. All right, hope you enjoy. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. You remember the uh, end of the Jump Pile Damascus video? And this is what we ended up with. It's our end to cut. It has all these imperfections in it. So, we're going to give you a little overview of what happened in the last video at the very end. Because we're going to use this little end cut with all the imperfections. And we're going to make a knife out of it that we're going to trade for some more bandsaw blades to a friend of mine, Corey, for some more 15 and 20, so we can make more Damascus. All right, so this is what we came up with at the end of the last video. And that bar was almost a half inch thick, and it had our three different types of billets in there. So we're going to take this thing and we're going to give it a sort of a rudimentary tip, something we can start forging with. And we're going to forge this out a little bit thinner. You can notice how hard it is cutting through that first bit of Damascus. That's where the bandsaw blades and the 1075 is. And you can see them on the right there. They were pretty hard to get through, even though I annealed that thing. All right, we'll get Seymour all fired up here. And we're going to thin this out from its half inch down to about 5 16 thick before we get started grinding on it. And we'll uh, forge in some, you know, the tang and, and uh, the tip on it before we get started on the grinding. And Floyd Depress is going to help us do that. And then we'll get it over to Scrappy the Power Hammer to finish them off a little bit here. Smooth everything out. He's really good at that. And as a footnote, we got some more steel to build some more dies for Scrappy. So uh, he will become a little more diverse. And we're going to get our Tong Jig rebuilt for the new dies as well. Alright, a little flatter there to uh, get some of those ridges out. thing and this is something I saw um, I, can't, I can't remember the gentleman's name I think it's Strupp maybe um, and I think he's from the Ukraine I believe don't get angry with me if I'm wrong about that uh, I saw him uh, notch a blade out like this and then use his press to to find the tang and it seemed a pretty cool and easy shortcut so this is something I've been doing a little bit of lately it seems to work out so Thanks for the inspiration there. And we're just going to hammer that uh, layered Damascus edge, pattern welded steel edge, whatever your preference is, up around the corner, up to the tip. And then the spine of this thing is going to be the um, forklift chain. And then, of course, the center of it is the cable Damascus. So, and if you haven't seen the previous video of how I put this together, it's literally just a bunch of stuff out of my scrap pile. Some stuff folks have sent me, the forklift chain, 
and uh, a cable I picked up at the junkyard and of course the guy I'm making this knife for he doesn't even know I'm making it for him but we're going to offer it as a trade like I said for more um, bandsaw blade material and uh, he was the one that provided the bandsaw blades for the edge of this thing in that pattern welded steel all right I think we're straight enough close enough we're going to take some of this scale off here and I've been threatening to build a surface grinder of some sort and I haven't done that yet but I'm going to take this over to my six inch belt sander which I think eventually is going to become a surface grinder of some sort once I take the time to figure out how to reconfigure it and we're going to flatten both sides we're just going to use the six inch belt horizontally and uh, just hold it down and grind it until we get flat on both surfaces Let's save on some 2 by 72 belts. The belts for this thing are a lot more readily available and cheaper. And this took a little bit of time and a whole lot of dunking it in water to keep my fingers from melting. But it wasn't too bad. It was about 20 minutes. And uh, all the lumps and bumps and imperfections were out and uh, came out pretty flat, both sides fairly uniform thickness and then over to the belt 2 by 72 belt sander start uh, shaping this thing so we can get it ready to uh, heat treat and what I've been doing is I've been starting off with my bevel jig because I'm not totally confident yet in my uh, ability to grind bevels freehand from the beginning and hey big dog gotta know what's going on <laughs> there you go gotta get back to work so i've been starting with the uh bevel jig and getting it quite a ways in there and i've been doing a little bit of freehand after that once those bevels are set it's a whole lot easier to maintain them and like i said not the knife maker. I do this for a challenge and entertainment. Um, it's not something I'm really good enough at to sell or, you know, this is a giveaway kind of a thing. And it's going to have some imperfections in it. But that's okay. Corey will just use it as a utility knife in the shop anyway, which is fine. He'll get something out of it, and so will we. All right, we get it into some etch here and see what this thing's looking like. And it's not too bad, kind of cool. We got a little bit of a thing there, but it's not very deep. And like I said, that kind of a little imperfection, not a big deal in this case. Corey's not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. get that tang refined. We're heating up a rod there to warm up our oil so we can go it into a, a uh, heat treat here. And I was worried about delamination from all the different types of metal that I'd put into this thing. But uh, it came out real straight. Very nice. And filed on it for a while because I wasn't quite sure and it actually came out really hard and I was very happy about that didn't find any soft spots on that edge at all and I didn't find anything that had separated cracked or delaminated so another plus so we went through this getting off the scale getting ready to uh, put it into that tempering oven clean it up and I went through several belts I took it all the way down to about a 600 grit alright you notice the fingerprints on this thing 
and I did not clean those off before I went into the tempering oven with it. And you can kind of see those in different colors. I don't know if that's a thing or one of you smart guys can tell me that. But it looked like it tempered back maybe a little too far. It got a little purple there. But, you know, file test says it's still good, so we're going to keep going for it. took it to 800 grit on the uh, belt sander again way up there and then this is a piece of an old belt that I'm hand sanding this with and I took that back down to 600 grit so it was actually fairly easy to to uh, hand sand into the etch one last time and there you go you can see that layered and then the cable and then the forklift chain. Now this wood was sent to me by Philip Taylor in a big box of wood. It's really awesome stuff. And this is a piece of wrought iron. And we're going to build a little wrought iron bolster on this thing. So we're going to forge that wrought iron out to just a little bit narrower than the wood. I don't want to thin it up too much. I want to leave that wrought iron as thick as possible. But I need enough to grind down and, and shape or that little, I guess you call it a bolster. And we're going to slot punch this so I don't have to do a whole bunch of drilling and filing. You should be able to just slot punch it and then uh, do a little filing to get that hang to fit. So I've got my slot punch in there to keep that integrity of that hole as I forge that back down with a power hammer. A little bit of cleanup, and our blade tang should fit right in there. That's good enough. I'm gonna clean this up, and we took it down to about a 300 grit. All right, get this wood marked out so we can. Drill it out for the tang. Of course, we're doing a hidden tang on this one. And we'll drill a couple of pins in it, cross pins. And we'll make those out of brass. So I've never been trained to make knives, and I've never. Uh, taking any lessons or anything like that. Pretty much all of the knowledge that I have on knife making is from you guys on YouTube. So uh, just kind of watch some of you guys and forging part is, is fairly easy. I've been doing that for a long time. And forging one object is like forging another object. But when it comes to all the technical knife terminology and and uh, the intricacies of that, I am not knowledgeable on that at all. I fake my way through it like any other novice watching a YouTube video. So we're going to take a little blast brass plate here. And uh, we're going to give ourselves a little separator in there, add a little color to it. For no other reason than because uh, I can. And I saw somebody else do it. So there you go. And we're going to kind of roughly draw out what we want for a handle shape. And we're going to get that over to the bandsaw and cut that, sh well, our little round thing around the blade is missing. Hmm. We're going to have to build one of those. All right. Let's do that real quick. We have a piece of two and a quarter inch round steel. And we'll just face it off till it's the right thickness. It should be pretty easy to get this thing done. And then you um, break your carbide. But we had another one. Get her all sanded up, find the center, cut it out on the bandsaw, the metal cutting bandsaw. Get it in there and cut her handle out. Good to go. That wasn't too bad. Okay, doke. Little side projects inside side projects. 
Now these things are extra large black shield nitro glove things and I gotta be honest with you I don't know whose hands are this size that are extra large but come on these things are very restricting but it's better than walking around with epoxy on your fingers for three days so we'll put up with them alright so the goal here is I cut this hole a little bit big to give myself some room to move the handle around a little bit the way I wanted and you know we fill it up with epoxy and call it good and this took a lot more epoxy than I thought it was going to and of course I drilled some holes in the side so it was going to want to start dripping out so I was in a little bit of a hurry that wasn't too bad and I figured I get this in it'll start squeezing out and it didn't Okay, let's mix up some more. There we go. More comfortable with that. All right. Yeah, can't clamp it yet. Let's get the pins in it. So these are uh, eighth inch brass pins and I figured they'd be perfect. I don't want to make them too big, take too much material out of that tang. Alright. And it just offers a little extra security for that, that handle, I suppose. A little bit of a mechanical fastening as well as the chemical epoxy. Alright, so use a little acetone. And we're going to clean the epoxy off the face of that wrought iron and the blade before it starts setting up too much. And a lot less cleanup to do on that side of things. All right. And we left this thing for about four and a half, five hours. It's uh, it was three minute epoxy. And then we went for it on the belt sander. And with that wrought iron bolster in there, it's just about a half inch thick. Uh, made it a little interesting to make sure it didn't take off more wood around that thing and leave some sort of an edge or a lip. So it took a little bit of attention. And I went through the belts up to about an 800 grit belt there. I'm going to give it a little polyurethane wipe on see what this looks like and some pretty nice looking wood thank you so much Philip good job buddy and of course this stuff will soak in and it'll get dull again and I'll just have to keep putting layers on layers of this stuff on it but that's okay I did not stabilize this particular piece of wood I wanted to see how it would come out just like this and it's absolutely gorgeous I love that very nice stuff bolster didn't come out too badly my little brass separator there didn't look too bad and I think Corey will enjoy that knife there you go we'll have to build a little sheath for it All right, guys, so there you go. It uh, didn't come out too bad, too bad. Let's see if we can get a little gander on that. You can see the different layers there. And a little wrought iron bolster didn't come out too badly. I like the shape of the handle. It came out really nice. And uh, I think Corey will enjoy that. Now that uh, we're back to the barter system, because the government shut down. And uh, we have to trade knives for 15 and 20. Anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. So there you go on that. A um, couple of other things. I've still got stuff that I need to send out for folks. Philip, you know who I'm talking about. And uh, I owe a couple of these to a couple of guys still. And I haven't forgot about you. I've just been uh, down and out. So we're uh, getting back there. And. Uh, I'll uh, get this stuff in the mail to you just as soon as I can get out of the house and uh, get to the post office and take care of all that. So uh, anyway, so I wanted to thank 
all you guys who have uh, made pledges and, and donations on Patreon. I really, really do appreciate that. You know, you guys are awesome. I wanted to say thanks for stopping by Big Dog Forge. Appreciate it. And uh, hope you guys liked what you saw. If you do, big thumbs up. And uh, got a couple of collaborations coming up here in the near future. Hey, Big Dog. And uh, so that, that'll be fun. And I think that's it for this time around. So I'll throw a video up here of the Scrap Pile Damascus build, and uh, you can check that out. So thanks for stopping by, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Be safe. Take care. And uh, see you next time. Bye now.